So it's wedding season, and it's hard enough to photograph a wedding, let alone photograph a wedding when shooting film. But imagine if your photographer came with a stylist, and your stylist came with a photographer. Let's go. We're here at Stearns Wharf in Santa Barbara. It's kind of the cool place to hang out in Santa Barbara. And we're waiting on the beach because Tanya and Tia, are, we're waiting for them to do a wedding today at Bacara. And I'm expecting something crazy because they said, make sure your cameras are rolling while we pull up. So we're just waiting. I don't know what's happening, but I'll give it. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're crazy. They're crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> I grew up in Los Gatos, California, up uh, the Bay Area, like San Francisco Bay Area, so just south of San Francisco a bit. And, um, you know, I feel like I, I've not really changed since I was a kid. When I was a kid, I used to dress my friends up and take their pictures. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily like the actual taking their picture part that, that really excited me, because that just sort of documented the part that really excited me, which was dressing them up and making them feel really good in their own skin while I took their picture. Um, and I never, I didn't have dreams of becoming or pursuing a career in photography. I actually thought I would be doing what Tia does for the most part, styling, wardrobing, hair and makeup, all that kind of stuff. I, I had a 10 year career in modeling before I ever got into doing what I do now. Um, and Tia and I met, uh, it's tw I counted, it's 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. I saw pictures in my head during photo shoots when you know I would style it I would do the hair and makeup and the wardrobe being in and I had pictures in my head of what the end result should look like you know and a lot of times on the shoots I'd be even doing some directing like oh what if the model did this or what if she did that you know and every time the film came back it was just a constant disappointment like I can't even use this for my portfolio you know it just was not good so I borrowed a camera from my brother, he had a 35 millimeter Minolta, yeah. and I'm just like, I'm gonna see if I can do this any better myself. So God bless it, I did. And, and the modeling agency that I was working with at the time, they're like, you know, the girls can pay you to do this. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so that's how I decided to start shooting. I was born wanna... in 1969, Summer of Love. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my parents were hardcore, <laughs> hardcore hippies. Look at the fur in her hair. <laughs> and I was born in Oregon, Ashland, Oregon. And um, you know, <clears throat> I was a tomboy. I didn't want anything to do with girly stuff. Heck no! And just building forts and mud pies and stuff. And I was never drawn to anything. School. Yeah, I was very like straight A student, <laughs> you know. But it was just dreamland all the time. Yeah. Always dreaming. She so, still does. And and I'm not ever changed. No. Just no, noticing all the just random beauty, beautiful things. Just a little flower coming out of the crack of the sidewalk. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? You artist from the beginning. You I saw guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody said I was a weirdo. <laughs> no. But anyway, yeah. um, and I, long story short, I, I found an agent and I was doing com commercial modeling. I was only 5'7", so it wasn't like, you know, Paris bound or anything, yeah. but I um, was a vocalist and was doing some performance art and some going towards that. My agent said, you know what? You always come to your auditions so well put together and why don't I just rep you as a stylist for a while? Okay, flying by the seat of my pants, always. And um, connected with the photographer she was working with and we did testing and that's where I met T. Yeah. She I was, was a baby model, and I was a baby makeup artist, and I did her first photo shoots. Wow. <laughs> and then I went, I went off to, like about nine years, and she went off about nine years, and we literally did travel the world circuit, like do you know, hitting up all the major markets for fashion, and and then one day, I was in Oregon because I've always kept a base in Oregon, and then she had moved up to Oregon by that time, yeah. 
and I'm driving down the road in my hoopty. And uh, <laughs> I'm walking down the road. I She's locked my down keys the road. in the car. I'm walking down the road. I'm like, T! I I'm look down, I'm like, Schlosser! Yeah. <laughs> Schlosser! I'm like, T! <laughs> it was love at first sight. <laughs> and then I realized she, I by that time, she had been irritated with the photographers. Yeah. I was all, as a stylist, was so bummed out constantly. And one day this photographer said, you just want to push the button too? Because I didn't, I'm the kind of stylist that doesn't show up and just do makeup and then goes off and, you know, smokes or talks on the phone. Right. Or, you know, I do the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe. I art direct, I get involved with casting. It's just been that way since day one. Right. It's not control freak, but it's just no. It's just an overall picture. Yeah, so you why, have to at the end of the step see out. the final result in your head, and if you don't, it's hard to do. Like yeah. we kind of both just cross over. We just over cross all. over. Yeah. And even working in a team like with art directors and that kind of thing, it has to be the kind of person that is willing to let us do what we do best. And what we do best is help create the whole final product. And it's not just like, yeah. you know, I don't just show up ever on a shoot and push the button. Like I have to have my hands in mm -hmm. the ideas, the styling, the creative, the every the location, little thing. The everything. It all has to like, <clears throat> it has to be a piece of me, I think, not, and a piece of her. Why are you film? Why film? Um, I've always been film. I've never shot digital. You know, I started shooting 10 years ago when that's all you could shoot was film. And I just never gave it up because it was so beautiful. And I bought a digital camera. I never got the results from my digital camera. And I never really ever brought it into my business. I would try, I would experiment with it, I'd play. I would try so hard to make them look good. Um, and either I'm just a really horrible digital photographer or I don't know because I can't make them look like my film images. It lacks do. depth and richness. Yeah, it does. For me, it's like visually, there's such a difference. And the, then when you're shooting, it's so different. Like shooting film, it's like you shoot so instinctively and purposefully, and you connect. Like my whole thing is I have to connect with my subject, right? I have to connect and I have to get them, I have to pull things mm -hmm. out of them. So in order to do that, I can't be looking down at my camera. I can't be worried about ISOs. I can't, or I guess I worry about ISOs. I can't be worried about like white balancing it. I can't stop and break this thing that I've got to like check something. And if I did, I'd look at it and I'd go, oh crap, that sucks. I gotta do something, you know what I mean? It would freak me out. So I, when I shoot, I shoot very like intuitively. I shoot more like from in here, you know what I'm saying? Like I connect, I shoot, and I don't even think about it. But now it's so automatic right. that it's not, it's the easiest thing to shoot. Like I don't understand how people or why they shoot digital because film is so easy, it looks beautiful. And that's so opposite what people think. I know, but it's not true. It's just wow. that's yeah. that's what they think. Yeah. Yeah. But it also makes you a better, in my opinion, it makes you a much better photographer mm -hmm. because you have, if every time I push the button, $2. Two dollars, two dollars. So tell me how that would change the way anyone shoots. Yeah. If they had to spend two dollars every time they push the button, they're gonna be shooting so that every picture counts. Yeah. You and know? also they're not thinking, oh I can fix that in post, I can fix that, but I can do yeah. that, I can do just to change it, I can do that. You're having to yeah. like, create a piece of art right there on the spot. Yeah. So everything happens in the camera instead of like, you know, if, if there's a hair, you know, you grab it and then you shoot it. You don't go, I'm just gonna do it later in Photoshop. Right. You know, and there again, we do use Photoshop to our minimal minimal amount of Photoshop to our if we have to, but it's like not the goal. The goal is to get it right in camera and, you know, even cropping everything. It takes me about an hour and a half um, to prep my bag, which probably is about average before every wedding. Yeah. Um, I have one, two, three, four, four cameras usually on me. Sometimes like I'll have a Holga or something in the mix. Um, I look like Rambo, only with cameras instead of guns. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be shooting a whole lot of Kodak, which I love. They have a couple new films. The thing I love about Kodak so much is that, you know, in a digital world, Kodak is still inventing films. And to me, that is huge, and that tells me a lot about the company and their priorities. I have 160, the new Portra, which I love. Um, very, very good grain, very good skin tones. Whoa. Love this film. Um, I have a little bit of black and white here. I have the Portra 400, which everyone raves about. So what if you take a picture in black and white and you wish that it was color? 
We just can't do that. You like, can't you do You have it. to envision it before. I see things in black and white or I see things in color. So do you have a camera, one's black and white and one's color mm -hmm, the whole mm -hmm. time? Wow. Yeah, and throughout the day, like I usually shoot everything in both throughout the whole day. Yeah. I tend to do a lot more black and white at night when I'm having to use some flash. Yeah. Just for it looks better. Yeah. Like color just, mm -hmm. yeah. It looks more timeless too. It looks more timeless. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. one of the reasons I, like I love film. I have two contacts that I shoot with. The glass look. on these is just, ugh. You cannot so beat pretty. the glass on the Zeiss lens on this really. Record. But um, that being said, I just acquired a new lens too for those guys. So this one looks newer than this one. You know, I just acom I just acquired this guy. I had this guy for about five, six years now. Yeah. For 35, I shoot Nikon F100s, and I have two. And I usually have like Aww. black and white in one and color in one. Yeah. Well, Allison is very lucky to have you guys here. And We're I've excited seen, to meet yeah, her. And Bacara is amazing, and it's just yeah. a really pretty venue, pretty bride, pretty Wonderful. pictures, pretty photographers. Aww. We're set. Want to go do this? Pretty host. Pretty host. Pretty dude. All right, you guys, let's go do this. Okay, awesome. let's do it. Cool. Summertime and Lord living Jesus, we just want to thank you so much for this beautiful day, day in Santa Barbara. We want to thank you. The so fish are this jumping. Here, and the Cotton grows high. <laughs> I can't remember the. <laughs> your daddy's rich and your mom, she's good looking. So hush, little baby, don't you cry. <laughs> Good one. He's got it. Okay, come on. Let's see it. I'm pra we're practicing. Yeah. One, two, three. When you see me work, you won't think for a second that I'm stressed out. Right. Mm -hmm. Even during family pictures is the most stressful time. Yeah. But I'll be like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Making it real light. Yeah. Because that's gonna, if they sense my stress, then they're gonna feel stressed. Right. Um, and I do, I'm, my brain, when I'm shooting a wedding is a little different than like some of the other projects that we do. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and normally on most of our shoots, it's all, Fun, little dork energy thrown in. Mm -hmm. We always we have a rule that it's only positive energy on a shoot. We mm -hmm. never allow negative energy from anyone on the set, yeah. anybody, because yeah. it just brings everything down. Yeah. And the best pictures happen when everyone mm -hmm. feels amazing. Yeah. So that's like one thing that we make sure mm -hmm. to bring. Mm -hmm. At weddings, sometimes it's a little difficult because you're dealing with so many different energies yeah. throughout the day, and you're more wow. there to document all of that. And so. It's a little different, like it's not my job to create the energy on the wedding, although I'll try really hard with the bride and groom when I have them to myself. This nice smile, laugh, laugh, laugh! Oh, you guys, so pretty. Go in like you're gonna give her a little kisses. Don't do the fish lips though. Just like you're gonna whisper something to her real close. Real intimate. <laughs>
photographs. Like, we've worked with photographers who do a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and they get in their head, like, creating a photograph. Instead of letting the, the people tell yeah. the story. I say, yes. don't think of, like, a picture of a couple. This is not a picture of a couple. What's the story? That's what I dig about her, you know, as far as um, a person anyways, but just as far as a photographer as well. I mean, it, it, there's not like a disconnect between the personality and the professional photographer. It's all encompassed into one. Right. The motivation is not to make a million dollars. The motivation is not to be the coolest kid in high school. The motivation is to just take what, you know, God's given her and like spread it to the world, which is you know, whatever that means, spread it to Santa Barbara, spread it to this bride or this model or this musician or, you know what I mean? Like that's the only thing we really get to leave behind. And, and if you put that out in the world, people are drawn to you. They want that. That's what people really want. We love to inspire other people too. Yeah. That's like huge. We, we started offering workshops, not because we think that we want to make a lot of money on workshops, but because so many people kept coming and asking for How help. How do you do that? And you inspire me so much. How can, how can I have some of that? Like what I see in your work and your personality and how. And that's why we decided, well, we better do some workshops so that we can help these people who obviously need it and want it so bad. Yeah. Like Mo Most of the reasons why they're not getting what they want is because of the intimidation factor, because the compared, they're comparing themselves with this guy and that girl. And, you know, like they're looking around too much, worried yeah. about some, what are, what's that guy charging? What's the guy's, what's his equipment? It's, there's too much looking around. Yeah. Stop that. Just yeah. chill out and be yourself. Obviously, there's room for learning and being inspired by other people, but but it's that's a whole different it's a whole different approach. Yeah. You know?
with clients, you know, it's it, both of it's never like, oh, no. That's not working. No, like, no, I'll take me. that off. No. Because the reason why is what happens when you're the model. I remember this when I was the model too, you know, or you're the, the model and they go, you. oh no, that's not working. What do you feel? You, I'm doing something wrong. It's immediate, it's all personal. When you're, you're the one in front of the camera, it's all personal. So if you hear the words, that's not working, or no, I don't like that on her, or no, nah, you know, like, it's almost like a disconnect. Like this is a human being. Mm -hmm. This is not a this is not a McDonald's hamburger that you're shooting. Mm -hmm. It's a human being, you know. And if you say, eh, no, that's not working, or I don't like that on her, or no, it, the rest of the day, you're not gonna get what mm -hmm. you could have got out of that person if you had built them up, you know. So and, saying like, let let's try. Yeah. This. And I obviously, sometimes things don't work. Mm -hmm. And so what we like to do in those situations is like, oh my God, it's almost perfect. Hold on, a couple more little things we need to do to make it perfect, right? That's so much better than saying, eh, mm -mm. you know? advise people in that shoot from your heart shoot what you love don't shoot for the client shoot for yourself every single time put your blood sweat and tears into creating the best pictures you possibly can and the rest should fall into place um, I would have to say that not everyone is your client you know not everyone's your client not everyone's gonna like you not everyone's gonna gonna get you and and you you have to you have to let that go and and like she said have faith that the people that are supposed to cross your path will cross your path my biggest piece of advice for anyone is stay true to yourself um, I never went to school for photography because and I consider that a blessing to my work not a curse because I never learned what not to do um, and I hear people tell me all the time like that I just break all the rules but the good thing is I never really learned what the rules were so I didn't know I was breaking them I was just shooting things I loved that made sense to me and looked beautiful and I don't know a thing about the Rembrandt or the all of that stuff but I do know that I love taking beautiful pictures of beautiful things and beautiful people. What I would tell our fellow humans <laughs> and is to just um, Find, find that, that, that deep love that you have, that we have all were born with, really we were, that before it was tainted by the world, <laughs> and try to let that just seep out in, in your words, in the way you look at people, the, like smile at them. You know, you see so many people, you smile at them and they just look at you like, you're the crazy one. You know? Like, I, I, I know it sounds like really like, you know, 60s love, peace, but that's what people are constantly seeking. That is, that's what they, so let it show in your work, let it show in your actions, let it show in your words, let it show when you drive. <laughs> Please, Californians, um, give me a break. No, just, just let find, your love shine. Let your love shine. It might not be as like goopy and loopy as our love is, but you, we all have it in us and we all have ways to express it. And that's the only reason why people come in contact with each other in the first place is to is to share that and support each other with that love. And and your work will reflect that if you're focused on that and not focused on the fame and the money and the notoriety. You'll that will come if if you're you know if you're being yourself and and, and act, acting it out of love in every step of the way. I'm Tanya Lippert. I'm Tia Reagan. Together we're T and T Dynamite. And we have officially been... <laughs> <laughs>